ko na. Happy Sabbath again, Church. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. It's a privilege to be here again. And I pray that God will be with us. Okay. And He will bless us. As we always do. Now, I want us to open our Bibles and turn to Psalms 102, verse 16. Psalms 102, verse 16. Psalms 102, verse 16. And I will read in your hearing. If you're there, say Amen. 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 When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. May the Lord bless his holy words. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, we hear your word, O oh Father. Before you come in your glory, we you build up your church. Father, all things is possible to you. So that Lord, help us to trust you, to do your work. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, we look around in the world and see what's happening. The signs that we see testify that our Lord is near. God not to come in his grace, but God will come in his glory. It's not the first coming of Christ, but the second coming of Christ. The Bible says he will come with his glory and all the glory of his angels. But before we come, the verse says what? He must build up what? Zion. Before Christ come, he must build up his church. How will he build up his church? I know we can testify, the, the Bible says in Matthew 24, there is wars and rumors of wars, mm -hmm. pestilence, famine, and all of these things. But the Bible says this is the beginning of sorrows. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe the reason why Christ didn't come as yet is because of what the verse says. He says, I have to first build up Zion. Mm -hmm. Then I will come in my glory. Mm -hmm. Build up Zion. So, we look at something on the screen here. As we continue, it says, Those who are living upon the earth, when the intercession of Christ shall cease in the sanctuary above, are to stand in the sight of a holy God without a mediator. Mm -hmm. Their robes must be spotless. Their character must be purified from sin and by the blood of sprinkling. Through the grace of God and their own diligent effort, they must be conquerors in the battle with evil. Mm -hmm. While the investigative judgment is going forward in heaven, while the sins of penitents, believers are being removed from the sanctuary, there is to be a special work of the purification of putting away of sin among God's people upon the earth. This work is more clearly presented in the message of the Revelation 14. This is the three angel messages. Notice only first what this quote says. Before Christ comes in his glory, the work that he's doing in the heavenly sanctuary, remember the Bible says, must come boldly to the throne of grace, yeah. that in the time of needs, so whatever power we have, we can go to Jesus. But a time is coming when he, is not, when he will not be there anymore. And that time, the Bible says, we must be without what? Spot. We must be without sins, so to speak. Because our great high priest is not there anymore to forgive us and to intercede us for our sin. And the reason why God is bringing this to us today is because we are living in a time where the Bible and the world and the event declaring that Christ's second coming is imminent. But before Christ comes, the Bible says he need to build up Zion. I will learn what it means to build up Zion. Now let's move on. <clears throat> I also saw that many do not realize what they must be in order to live in a sight of the Lord without a high priest in the sanctuary through the time of trouble. Those who, those who receive the seal of the living God and protected in the time of trouble must reflect the image of Jesus fully. You know the purpose of Christ come to this world is not just to die for us. Mm -hmm. You know when God created Adam and Eve, the Bible says they were perfect, right? They're reflecting the image of God. And because of sin, all of these things change. Mm -hmm. So Christ came to do his work, to restore us back into that image of what God created Adam and Eve before they sinned. So the Bible is telling us God, before Christ come, when you leave the most holy place, we have to reflect Christ's character fully. Do we understand what does that mean? To reflect 
Jesus character fully or reflect the image of Jesus fully because we know Jesus was just like his father Jesus will reflect his father and we need to reflect Jesus fully because we can't go to the kingdom of grace or kingdom of glory with God if we're not reflecting his character fully <clears throat> now in Daniel 12 verse 1 the Bible says and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. Written in the book. Now, this verse is telling us that Michael is going to stand up. The word that he's doing as a high priest, he's going to finish. When Michael stands up, he will say Revelation 22, verse 11, which says, He that is unjust, let him be what? Unjust, unjust still. He that is filthy, let him be what? Filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. Amen. That means you are holy before. For him to say you are holy still. And this is before Michael stand up. This is before the second coming of Christ. So God is telling us that the time is coming that we need to be holy. We need to be righteous. Because when he stand up, it's all over. We can't change anymore. We need to be holy. We need to be righteous. Amen. When we come to church, you know, it's really a blessing to come to church. But coming Amen. to church won't save us. Amen. What will save us is when we have a close relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And when we have a close relationship with Jesus Christ, and we surrender to Jesus Christ, we will reflect his image. Amen. You know, Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. The Bible says we must be one with one another as Jesus and his Father is one. When Philip said to Jesus, show me thy father, what did Christ say? You see me? If you see me, you see the father. No, we are representing Christ. We should be one with Christ. So when somebody said, hey, can you show me Christ? Or show me Christ's character? I should say, look at me. Follow me. Well, can we say that? Probably not. But we need to be one with Christ. Reflect his image fully. And that is the purpose of the gospel. That is the purpose of Christ, and that is the purpose of the Holy Spirit. So when we come to church and have a really nice time, and we go into the world, as we learn the Sabbath lesson, we, 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 we do what is right in the church, but when we outside of church, we do our own thing because there's no elders watching, no church member is watching, so we can watch what we want to watch, we can listen to what we listen to, but we come and say hallelujah. We must reflect Jesus' character fully. Because in Hebrews 7 verse 25 it says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the utmost that come to he, come to God by him. See he ever liveth to make intercession for them. And that is good news because Christ is always there to save them to the utmost who come to him. That's what the verse says. But in 1 John 2 verse 1 says, My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father Jesus the Christ, the righteous. He says, if we sin, we have a what? An advocate. But we are learning a time is coming when there is no more advocate. Is that so? Yes, because you're not going to be a high priest forever. So we have to reach a point, that's what the Bible says, if we sin, not when we sin, but if we sin. The purpose of the gospel is to take away our sin. That's what Christ came to do. But a time is coming that we see the signs around us testifying that Christ's second coming is imminent. God, even though it's a great controversy, and we know that in this great controversy, in heaven, where it all begins, Christ defeats Satan. Amen. 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 Christ came into the territory of Satan. Christ again defeats Satan. Amen. Amen. In these people, if you are faithful to Christ, Christ will defeat Satan through his church. Amen. 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 And that is what the gospel teach. So when you are being defeated by Satan over and over and over, it's not the problem with Christ. The problem is with us. And we need to find out what is the problem so, so Christ can fix the problem. Mm -hmm. Because he's coming for a church who reflect his character fully. Mm -hmm. and that's what God wanted to tell us. Now, Psalms 102 verse 16, the scripture reading, When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. One of my favorite quotes in Christ's object lesson, page 69, he says, Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in the church. 
when the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his church, in his people, then he will come and claim them as his own. So what is Christ is waiting for? His character to be manifest in his church. And that's what it means when the Bible says God will build up Zion. Now we're not allow the Bible to show you some of these things by going to when God built the temple. Exodus 25 verse 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. According to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instrument thereof, even so shall he make it. 25 verse 40, he says, And look that thou make them after the pattern which was showed thee in the mount. Exodus 26 verse 30, And thou shalt wear up the tabernacle according to the fashion thereof which was showed thee in the mount. My sermon titled, titled The Pattern Man. The Pattern Man. How was this temple built? After the pattern that God, sh that God showed Moses. Now let me ask this question. What if Moses never built this temple fully according to the pattern? Will God accept it? No. 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 We know that, right? Yeah. That's slightly mistake. He won't accept it. We know God's people was in Egypt mm -hmm. and they were commanded to use straw, I think, I think to make brick. These people for 400 years, they were in slavery. Mm -hmm. But now God took them out and gave them a sacred work to do. Mm -hmm. What I learned is that the spirit of the Lord come upon these builders. Give them spirit of wisdom, spirit of this. So they build this temple through the work of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's why they could build it just the way oh, God required it. And this is really important. This was when God gave Moses the pattern to build the temple. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look at... Um, what does the sanctuary represent anyway? The sanctuary, the temple. What does it really represent? My dear little son, if I could say. It represents Yes, which is Christ. Everything in the sanctuary represents Christ. Whether the, the altar of um, sacrifice, the, 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 the labor, the table. I was sure, but whatever it is represents Jesus Christ. Amen. So they were give a pattern to build, and they build it exactly as all God required it. Now let's look at Exodus chapter 40, verse 1. And the Lord spake to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month shall thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. Um, verse 16 it says, Thus did Moses according to all that the Lord commanded him to do. Commanded him, so did he. Verse 33, he says, And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. So when Moses finished this building of the temple, what happened in verse 34? Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. So the glory of the Lord, God gave it to them as a, as a sign that he accepted that building of the temple. He filled it with his glory. And you're going to see this example over and over and over. When God said do something, God expected to do it according to the pattern. And we need to understand when God said to the church, I want you to do this, God expects us to do it according to the pattern. Or else he won't accept it. In God's plan for the ancient Israel, he gave them command. On the first day of the first month shall thou set up the tabernacle. We have no tabernacle to set up, as had the children of Israel, but we have a work of building to do, the importance of which all need to understand. Let us remember that character is not the result of accident, but day by day it is forming for good or for evil. Great importance attached to this work of character building for it is far-reaching in its result. I know there's a verse in Psalm somewhere. It says, Lest the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. Yes. Our Lord build it, build it in vain. Mm -hmm. God has to be the one to build the house. And if God builds the house, He will build it according to the pattern. Mm -hmm. Now look at um, 2 Chronicles chapter 28. 2 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 10. Take heed now, for the Lord has chosen thee, to build a what? A house. house. For the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. The, verse 11 says, Then David gave so, to Solomon his son the pattern of the porch 
and to the house thereof, and to the treasures thereof, and of the upper chambers thereof, and of the inner parlour thereof, and of the place of the mercy seat. Verse 12 says, And the pattern of all that he had by the Spirit, of the court of the house of the Lord, and of all the chambers round about, of the treasuries of the house of God, and of the treasures of the delicate things. Verse 19 says, And this says David, The Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me, even all the work of this pattern. Now this is the sanctuary or the temple of King Solomon. Right? Notice the Bible says in verse 12, and the pattern of all that he had by the Spirit. So it was the Holy Spirit gave King David to allow his son to build this temple according to what? The pattern. Amen. A pattern. Amen. Moses, a pattern. Amen. King Solomon, a pattern. Amen. Which pattern? God's pattern. But it's never building according to the pattern. God would what? He would accept it. And in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 3, he says, And the elder of Israel came, and the priest took the ark. And they brought up the ark of the Lord, and the tabernacle of the congregation, and all the holy vessels and that were in the tabernacle. Even those did, did the priest and the Levi bring up. Verse 6 says, and the priest brought in the ark of the covenant of the Lord unto this, his place in an oracle, into the oracle of the, of, of the house, to the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubim. Verse 10 says, and 11, And it came to pass, when the priests were come out of the holy place, that, he, that the cloth filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord has filled the house of the Lord. Notice again, God told Moses to build the tabernacle according to the pattern. When he did it, the glory of the Lord filled the house. Mm -hmm. King Solomon did the same thing. He built the house or the temple according to the pattern and then what? The glory of the Lord yes. filled the house. And if you go on and go on and come, if you are going to, who is the temple? Christ. Who is the temple? We are the temple of God, the church. Do we need to build this temple, this church according to a pattern? Which pattern? Christ. And that's where we're going. First Corinthians 3 verse 16 says, Know ye not that ye what? Are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Amen. What is this? What is the pattern for this temple? Me and you. What is the pattern? We talk about the temple of God, Moses, King Solomon, the Bible said, we are the temple. We see a pattern with Moses, we see a pattern with King Solomon, and the same pattern is given by God. So what is the pattern for me and you? Because we are the temple of God. Likeness of the Lord. Sorry, likeness of the Lord. Look at John 2, verse 19 and 21. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered and says unto them, Destroy this temple, mm -hmm. and in three days I will raise it up. But he spake of the temple of his body. Amen. And the Bible says the body is what? Is what, sorry? His temple. Or in the different verses of the Bible, the body is the church of God. And this church, which is the temple of God, must build after the pattern of who? Christ. Are you following church? Amen. So what if now this church is not built according to the pattern of Christ? Will he accept it? No. Why? Because we see two witnesses. When they build a temple, if you don't go according to God's pattern, he won't accept it. That's why Psalm 102, verse 16, the Bible says, God is building Zion, then he will come in his glory. So what God is waiting for, the reason why Christ has not yet come, because the church is not reflecting the pattern of Christ. And we're living at time, we're seeing the signs around us testifying that Christ's second coming is imminent. I know all of us can agree to that. But the Bible says God is waiting <coughs> with great passion for his character to reflect this church. Then it's up to us to know to ourselves that we know without Christ we can't do nothing. But through Christ, through the Holy Spirit, we can do it all things. You know, we live here, I know, we, we, we instantly reflect upon this message. We go home, we wait for the summer to finish, we turn on our television. And you know what we're talking about. You turn on things on the TV we shouldn't be watching. 
We listen, we listen to certain music. We do all sorts. When we hear from the scripture, God wants to build his church according to a pattern. How can we help God to build the church according to a pattern? Because God won't force us. Jesus is the pattern, is the perfect pattern. Amen. And it is the duty and privilege of every child and you to copy the pattern. By behold, we become change. We need to dwell upon Christ daily if we want to become like Christ. In order that the earthly tabernacle might be represented heavenly, it must be perfect in all its parts. And it must be in every smallest detail like the pattern in heaven. So it is with the character of those who are finally accepted in the sight of heaven. The Son of God came down to this earth that in him men and women might have a representative of the perfect character which alone God could accept. That's why when you accept Christ, God can see Christ in us. But we must accept Christ every day in our life. So when God sees us, he can see Christ in us. And if we accept Christ, Christ will never lead us to watch certain things on TV. Christ will never lead us to do certain things contrary to his will. We need to surrender to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives so the Holy Spirit can build. Notice it's always the work of the Holy Spirit to build the temple according to the pattern that outlined in heaven. And the reason why God is bringing this to us because sometimes we can't wait for Christ to come. But Christ is waiting for you to allow him to finish the work he started in you. That's what the Bible says, right? The work, the good work I started in you, God will finish it. But the only way God can finish it is if you allow the Holy Spirit to work. God is coming for a people. He make, some of us in this church, some of, some of us might be saved, but some be lost. Why? Because some of us may not allow Christ to finish the work. For the Lord to build Zion, which is the church, to, to look like Jesus in character, he will have to remove our sins. And we know where Christ is and what he will do to remove our sins. Christ cannot remove our sins if we don't give it to him. We have to send our sins into the heavenly sanctuary that Christ can cleanse us from all our sins. When Christ do all of these works, when Christ do all of these works, as the Bible says in Leviticus 16, verse 21, we know the story that when the high priest cleansed his sanctuary from the people, all their iniquities, all their transgression, he put those sins upon his scapegoat. Right? And the scapegoat represent who? Satan. And at that time, the people are clean from all their sins. Because the sins that Satan caused them to commit, they place back upon Satan's head. At that moment, they are cleansed. They are clean. They are free from sin. When God look at them, they are clean. God can come and take those people because his work is finished. What caused the, the, the building to be to have defects? It is sin. And it is the work of the high priest to remove those sins from the people. And that's the work of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary. Christ is not in the heavenly sanctuary to enable us and to empower us to continue sin. If we fall, we need to get up. The Bible says Christ is more than able to keep us from falling. We need to have a closer walk with Christ. You know, when Moses went up into the mount and he came down with his face glorifying, he first had to communion with God. The rest was down there scared and fearful of God. But for us to be glorified, just like Moses, we need to have a communication, we need to have a communion, a close relationship with God so we can glorify and reflect God's character. We must put on Jesus Christ, the Bible says. Put on Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ can do his work in us. When we put on Jesus, when God built this temple, Revelation 18, verse 4, and I heard another voice from heaven, said, Come out of her, my people, that ye may not partake of her sin, and that he received not of her plague. In Revelation 18, verse 1, he said, And after these things, I saw that an angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was light with his glory. In order for the earth to light with God's glory, as we learned in the previous two temples, the temple of the Lord has to finish what? Build according to the pattern. For God's glory to fill the earth through his people. That's the only way going to fill the earth. The people have to finish built according to the pattern of Christ. Now, 
Division 5, I know we mentioned this in um, a bit in Sabbath lesson. Division 5, verse 27. I believe the last time I came and preached, I, I mentioned these verses. But the Bible says, let's read from verse 25. So we were talking about uh, husband and wife earlier on. It says, husband, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, I'm a husband. And the Bible says, must love your wife as a Christ of the church. That's a command. That's a promise. Right? And God can enable us to love our wife upon our Christ of the church. He says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having one spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Amen. That is the end work of Christ's work in us through the Holy Spirit to produce this church. When this church is produced, it is built according to the pattern of Christ. Because the Bible says Christ without um, spot, without blemish. That was the characteristic of Christ. And this is the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. In 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23, it says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God in your whole spirit and soul that body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. That's what God wants us to be, blameless unto the coming of the Lord. I won't read all of these verses, but it's actually talking about the, the, the end work of the Holy Spirit in our life to finish building this temple according to the pattern of God. Now, Jesus' example. Jesus revealed no qualities and exercised no power that men may not have true faith in him. His perfect humanity is that which all his followers may possess if they will be in subjection to God as he was. So we can be like Christ if he did what Christ did. The secret of Christ's purpose life is total surrender to God. But well, look at how Christ lived his life. John 5 verse 30 says, I can, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. And in Luke 22 verse 42, it says, Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Notice how Christ lived a perfect and victorious life. What did he have to do? He had to give up his will. Because he said, I don't come to do my will. Are you willing to give up your will? Because you cannot live that life. You cannot allow the Spirit to build that temple if you still have your will to do what you want to do. In order for us to live like Christ, because Christ set an example, right? What did Christ do? What is Christ? He gave up his will. What does it mean to give up your will? Come on, tell me. What does it mean to give up your will? To surrender to him. To surrender to him. Okay, what else? Because that's what Christ did. Yeah. He lived just like me and you as a man. But in order for him to be victorious, he gave up his will. He says, what I come to do, I don't do it. I do my Father's will. And we're here today. What is our plan for the rest of the day? What do you plan to do today or tomorrow? I can guarantee you've got loads of plans to do. But according to Christ, Christ said, I don't come to do my will. I don't see you to say this to your church. When, I, when God was telling me these things, I'm saying, oh my God, because I have so much thing to do. And Christ said, well, if you're going to follow my example, I don't have nothing to do. I have something to do for my father. Whatever Christ wants to do, he never do it. And we can see in the garden what something Christ wants to do. He said, my father, let this cup pass away from me. That's what Christ wants to do. But he said, not my will, but your will. Because Christ always gave up his will. And what the life Christ lived, he was led by the Holy Spirit. And this is the example Christ set for us. When you give up your will to somebody else, you're going to follow what that somebody will is. And the work of the Holy Spirit that led Christ for 33 years, he never once sinned. Why? Because he gave up his will. Christ never chose to do anything in his own self. He chose the power of his Father to carry through day by day. And that's what God is saying to us today. He's waiting to build the church. Then he can come in his glory. But it would be selfish for Christ not to tell us how he wanted to build the church. Because Christ is the temple. And he's a pattern man. 
and you live a perfect life, and we need to follow that example. How did he live his life? He first gave up his will, Elder. He, your will is what you, the, 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 your will is the choices, the decision that you made. Your will is what governs this body. Christ gave it up. And when Christ gave it up, Christ was led by the Holy Spirit. And these are some of the examples. Christ have a prayerful life. He always goes to the mountains. He always goes to the wilderness. He goes spend time in nature and talk to his father. Prayer, you know, that's what Christ helped him to depend and get strength to live his daily life. But what I want you to take from this church, in order for God to build the temple of God according to the pattern of Christ, Christ gave up his will. Are you willing to give up your will today to God? I know we say yes, but tomorrow and today you have your own will to do things. But your will must be in harmony because all of God wants to do, He wants to have your will, but your will must be subject to His will. He says, when you pray, whatever you ask for, He will desire of your heart. But He said, those who trust Him, He will give them the desire of their heart. But these people, He said, they commit their ways unto the Lord. Your desire must be God's desire. Your will must be God's will. Everything that God wants, it should be what you want. And by doing that, God could build the temple and come for his people. Forming a character of good habits. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Sanctify them through thy word, thy word is true. That he might sanctify and cleanse them in the washing of water by the word. 1 Peter 1 verse 22, it says, Seeing ye have purified your soul, if obey the truth through the Spirit, unto unfailing love of the virgin, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Now, this is telling us, <clears throat> if we have the word of God in our heart, we won't sin against God. God will sanctify us because these are the way of God building the temple. He, 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 he cleanses us, He sanctifies us, but He do that with the word of God. And in order for Christ to do that, we have to spend time in the Word of God. Young children, adult, you know, as we hear a testimony earlier on, you know, we give our children phone, we give them iPad, we give them this, we give them that. But we're hoping that they slide somewhere into the temple of God. The only way they can form good habits and good character is spending time in the Word of God. Amen. Not just devotion in the morning, that is important. But we must spend time every time we have the opportunity in the word of God. Now by behold, we become changed into the pattern, the pattern man. We talk about prayer. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issue of life. Proverbs 4, verse 23. Guard the avenue of the soul. Those who, he said, we have a work to do to resist temptation. Those who would not fall a prey to Satan's device must guard well the avenue of the soul. They must avoid reading, seeing, or hearing that which suggests impure thoughts. We think them, church, what God wants us to do. We fail to do it. Philippians 4 verse 8 says, Finally, virgin, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. If you ask yourself this question, the movies that I watch, are they pure? The things I listen to, are they honesty? All the things that we behold, are they fulfilling Philippians 4 verse 8? If it's not, how then can Christ work? We have to submit ourselves to the word of God so Christ can do his work in us. Now God is calling us to a higher ground. That's the end of that presentation. God is calling us to a higher ground. We see signs around us testifying that Christ's second coming is imminent. There's nothing too hard for Christ. No matter what situation you're going through, Christ can save you. Christ can help you. The only thing God is calling for us to do today is to surrender our hearts to him. I know we hear it all the time, but Christ is saying this also. If I don't build the church according to the pattern of myself, God won't accept it. That's why Christ is not yet coming. You may say, why are we here? Why Christ don't come? 
You think Christ wants to watch all these sinful things happen over and over? Christ loves us. The Bible says, very apple of his eyes. He wants to come and take us out of this crazy world. But the truth of the matter is, our actions show that we love this world. Our actions show that we love this world. But we have good cheers. Christ says, I overcome the world. I overcome the world. And if you accept me, Christ will help you to overcome the world. If you surrender to Christ daily, Christ will build the world. I mean, Christ will build the church. If he might build me, he wants to build you, he wants to build all of us. But let us be true to God. And the Bible says, God is true, but every man let him be a liar. Let us surrender to God, church. God wants to bring this message to you today. That if you don't make Christ through the Holy Spirit, build you according to the pattern of Christ. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, according to the word of God, God will accept it. Because can it is sin that separates us from Christ. But Christ is on a mission to save, not to condemn. If we have any sin, Christ will come now before it's too late. So I can take that sin from you. And there's good news in Jesus. That's why God sent his only son. Because he loved us. And if you believe in him and subject ourselves to him, God will save us. May God bless you as we draw closer to God. As we spend time with God. Because in Christ, again, in Christ we are more than conqueror. There's nothing can separate from the love of Christ. But we need to trust Christ at his word. May God bless you. Amen. I don't know what next to say. I don't know.